Mom, please tell me it's because you use natural glow and not a nude beach situation. Get flawless, natural-looking color and no tan lines. Jergens. And don't be surprised if you see Steve Carell pop up on the new Netflix hit, Never Have I Ever, which just got picked up for season two. It's created by The Office alum, Mindy Kaling. And only we spoke to the show's breakout star, 18-year-old Mike. Happening now. A woman found dead inside a West Side home. What police have to say about it and why they're calling it suspicious. The SAISD superintendent wants to keep kids out of school buildings until after Labor Day. But some don't think that's long enough. Alamo Community College students are prepping for a new semester. The district's plans for students returning to classes this fall. The primary runoffs are underway in Texas and two other states. Which Senate race is getting national attention? And how the Alabama runoff election could provide a clear view of the president's influence among Republicans. If you had an iPhone 6 or 7, you could be able to get 25 bucks from Apple. How to get free money coming up. And yes, obviously another hot day across South Texas, actually one for the record books. I'll talk about that, how temperatures will be trending downward, and even a little chance of rain in the forecast. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, her two young children were alive and well inside the home, but their mother's dead body was found inside that same house on the far west side. San Antonio police are trying to sort out the details. Her family has since identified the woman as 19 year old Jasmine Williams. She is a mother of two. It happened in the 8600 block of Limpkin Court. Jaffney Gray is live at the scene now. Jaffney, do we know what happened? No, Steve, not many details have been released at this time, but what we do know is that the boyfriend of Jasmine Williams made the call to police after he said he found her unresponsive in a room full of blood. Now, Chief William McManus says that the boyfriend got home and realized that the garage door was open. He said that when he went in the home, that is when he found Williams unresponsive. They pronounced her dead on the scene. Uh, right now, investigators are digging into what they can to try to figure out exactly what happened. Now, unfortunately, Williams' baby and toddler were in the home at the time of this discovery. When we got here, we ran into her mother, who says that she is heartbroken knowing that her, gr her grandchildren are without their mother. She says she wants justice to the full extent. Nobody wants to bury your child before you die. She should outlive me, but I do need help. I can't bury her. The McManus says that the boyfriend has been detained for questioning and no other information has been released at this time. But tonight at 10, you'll hear more from Williams's mother and sister on the kind of woman she was and how she was just turning her life around. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. San Antonio ISD plans to keep students out of the classrooms until at least Labor Day. The Superintendent Pedro Martinez said he will be asking the Board of Trustees to vote on Monday to push the start of the school year back from August 10th to August 17th and then use remote learning to keep them out of school buildings for three more weeks. But as Garrett Berger tells us, there is some disagreement over what should happen next. For three weeks, kids in San Antonio ISD won't be in their schools, but they will be in session. I am allowed as a superintendent for the first three weeks of the school year to, re to limit the number of students that come into our district, including having 100% uh, learning remotely. That is what we plan to do. After that, though, Superintendent Pedro Martinez has to let students who want to come in person though he hopes it won't be too many. We would like to accommodate between 25 and 50 percent of our families to come in person after Labor Day. If we can do that. The San Antonio Alliance of Teachers and Support Personnel, though, thinks that's still too soon. The union signed on to a letter with several other unions and groups from Bear County, urging local and state decision makers to, among other things, advocate for a full nine weeks of remote learning. In looking around at the current situation, uh, what we see is a spike in COVID cases. We say at least nine weeks because it is a dynamic situation and we will need to reassess at the end of it. Superintendent Martinez doesn't have the power to do that. But he also doesn't think a 100% remote learning plan will work for everybody. Many of our children do not live in ideal living conditions. So, so for us to have a long-term remote plan does not work for our community. Martinez said he would like the flexibility to even consider that option, though. Or perhaps having different groups of students alternating their days on campus and online. 
But for now, he says the district is using all the powers he has. Martinez says he supports a letter sent by earlier this week by the Texas School Alliance and the Texas Urban Council of Superintendents to the governor that requests that districts be allowed to alter their be allowed to design the system that local health conditions permit. The board superintendent, uh, or sorry, the board of trustees president also signed on to a letter with ev with several other large school districts in the state requesting a similar measure. Live at the SAISD office, I'm Garrett Berger. KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. The Alamo College's district also laying out plans for students returning to school this fall. The district plans to continue with remote classes at all five of its campuses, with a few exceptions. Some career and technical courses and some arts and sciences like healthcare, nursing and public safety will have face to face learning at 10% capacity. For those programs, we've worked with the faculty and also with their accrediting agencies and determine that there is um, some select instruction that has to occur um, on campus. The classes start August 24th. Health screening and temperature checks will be required for everyone on campus. On campus events will not be held during the fall semester. ACCD says they will continue monitoring the state of COVID-19 and determine the next step accordingly. San Antonio College has voted to remove its Ranger mascot. In a unanimous vote, the college council agreed to stop using the name, symbol, and image of the Ranger mascot, which has brought up some strong opinions and controversy. Zach calls today's decision historic, saying the college has taken a great leap forward in being inclusive, diverse, empowered, decisive, and true to its values. A replacement mascot has not been decided yet. We have some new information on the death of a U.S. Army soldier at Fort Sam Houston Joint Base San Antonio, identifying him as 22-year-old Sergeant Calvante Ellis. He was found dead on base on Sunday. The U.S. Air Force Security Forces and the U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Commands are investigating. We have new information on a deadly hit and run from over the weekend. The Bear County Medical Examiner has identified the man killed while crossing the street at Division and South Flores as 21-year-old Antonio Lopez. Police said that Lopez was using a crosswalk when he was hit on Saturday night. The driver who hit him did not stop and has not been found. The San Antonio police trying to get to the bottom of why a woman stabbed her husband early this morning. It happened around four at a home on San Acacia. That's out by Roosevelt and Loop 410 on the far south side. The woman told police she was acting in self-defense when she stabbed her husband twice, once in his torso, once in his arm. The husband says that's not what happened. He told police she woke him up and stabbed him. He was taken to the hospital is expected to be OK. It is unclear whether that woman will face charges. We actually have over a total, not just today, but early and by mail. We've broken 100,000 voters. We haven't seen that in a primary runoff in forever. So we're really excited about that. It is election day, and if you haven't already voted, time is ticking by. The primary runoff is underway. The polls are open for about another hour and a half until 7 o'clock. So far, there have been more than 20,000 votes today. And right now on KSA.com, we have a list of the polling locations. Again, they're all open until 7. And it's not just here that people are heading to the polls. That's right. Voters in Alabama and Maine also taking a stance today. Nadia Romero explains voters in those two states and here in Texas could potentially shape the balance of power in Washington. You tell it, huh? Battle and Bama. Former Attorney General and four-term Senator Jeff Sessions looking to get his old Senate seat back. You can count on me. Uh, I'll be the same person I was before. But there. despite holding the position for more than 20 years and never losing a race, Sessions is considered the underdog in the Republican runoff against former Auburn football coach Tommy Tuberville. I'm a fighter. I'm really a politician's worst nightmare. The biggest factor in the race, Sessions' former boss, President Donald Trump. And I'll keep fighting for President Trump and his agenda. Jeff Sessions, quit on the president and he failed Alabama. Still upset at Sessions for his recusal during the Russia probe. President Trump endorsed Tuberville and recorded this message for the former coach. I'll tell you that Tommy Tuberville is going to do a job like you haven't seen. Well, the president has the right to speak up, but the president is not on the ballot. Uh, 
he'll be on the ballot in November and Alabama's going to vote for him and I will be voting for him. Waiting in the wings to take on the winner come November, Alabama Senator Doug Jones, one of the most vulnerable Democrats in the Senate. Tuesday's elections also determine who Maine Republican Senator Susan Collins and Texas GOP Senator John Cornyn will face. The Lone Star State is one place national Democrats have dubbed ground zero. They are investing time and money in Texas to potentially expand their congressional political power and perhaps turn the red state blue. So Nadia, MJ Hager and Royce West were in a fierce and bitter battle uh, to take on the Republican senator here in Texas, John Cornyn in the fall. Why is this race also getting national attention? Yeah, well, MJ Hagar, Ursula, is really a darling for the Democratic Party right now. She is who the Democratic establishment wants to win this primary. She's also an Air Force vet and what many people are calling a fresh face in politics. Royce West is a state senator. He has a state rep. Uh, he has a long history in politics. And he has this great story about being uh, someone who grew up in the projects of Dallas and turned his life into a success story. But when you look at the money, MJ Hagar has 10 times as much funding as Royce West, and we know that sometimes politics really comes down to who has the biggest war chest. Their last debate back in June uh, really involved some mudslinging. It was pretty heated. So right now, this race is so important to Democrats because they want to turn the Senate blue, and that would mean unseating John Cornyn. So they really want Hagar to win instead of West. Uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. Stephen Ursula. Nadia Romero live from the White House. Thank you, Nadia. And we did it again today. We broke another record high temperature here in San Antonio. Now, yesterday was an all-time July record high, making it to 107. Today, with our clear skies and similar conditions, it was another hot one, but we did shave off just a few degrees. We topped out at 105 today. That's well above the average of 94, and we broke the old record high by three degrees. And earlier this morning, we were in the mid 70s, which is actually fairly average. Take a look at the weather watchers. Warren's backyard in Del Rio, 110. Eagle Pass, 105 along with Floresville. 102, Windcrest, 104, Seguin. Woo, we're feeling the heat again today. Temperatures will get trimmed back a little bit, and there's a little glimmer of hope for some rain. We'll talk about all of that coming up. Thank you, Adam. The pandemic short changing the economy, literally, and you may soon see the effects of it next time you're at a store. If there's a little less jingle in your pocket, there's a reason for that. The Federal Reserve says there's a coin shortage. You might see signs like this one posted at a store, and it's because of the pandemic. It has significantly disrupted the supply chain and the way U.S. coins are circulated. Coin deposits from institutions like banks to the Federal Reserve have declined significantly the past few months. The U.S. Mint says its production of coins has also decreased due to measures put in place to protect its employees from the coronavirus. With Federal Reserve coin orders starting to increase as regions reopen, the coin inventory is at below normal levels. Officials at the Federal Reserve say they're working to lessen the effects of the shortage to minimize supply constraints and maximize production. The agency is managing how it distributes the coins it does have and is encouraging institutions to only order enough coins to meet consumer demand. The Federal Reserve officials actually say they're confident the coin shortage will be resolved once more of the economy opens and coins go back to being circulated as normal. If you're one of the many Americans who may recall a lawsuit over Apple and over the company purposely aging its batteries to promote the sale of new iPhone models, well, now is the time to cash in. Apple is settling the suit and we're going to explain after the break. How does free money sound? Well, if you're an iPhone user or if you bought any of a handful of other products, you may be able to stake your claim. It's the result of companies settling big class action lawsuits, even as they don't admit they did anything wrong. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz explains, it's up to you, though, to take action. 
Hello money! Owners of various Apple iPhone 6s and 7s can now claim a piece of a class action lawsuit settlement. Remember Battery Gate? At issue, Apple slowing speeds to offset errors caused by aging batteries, but not notifying owners. You may receive $25 per phone. The deadline to file is October 6th. You'll need the serial number or there's a search function. Don't forget your milk money. Non-dairy, that is. Califia Farms settled a lawsuit alleging they used fake vanilla instead of real stuff in some products. If you bought their almond milks, coffees, creamers, or yogurts in the past six years, you may receive up to five bucks without proof of purchase. Deadline is October 7th. If you bought various Cytosport muscle milks or protein powders, you can pump up your wallet. That lawsuit alleged misleading claims of leanness and protein content. For shakes, you can get up to $25, and for powders, another $25. No receipts needed. The deadline to claim is October 19th. And ladies, if you bought various You Buy Kotex products in recent years, you can file a claim and get up to $30. That lawsuit alleged defective products. The deadline to file is next month. If you qualify, you can file your claims through the links we put on our website. No, you're not going to get rich, but it is free money. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with Sky 12. Well, <laughs> You heard Adam say it just a few moments ago. Yep. We did it again. A record breaker. Our third record breaking day so far of this heat wave of 2020. And uh, it seems really... like it's just steam rising off downtown San is Antonio. That is? is that what that is? Let's just call it steam and not haze. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, okay. basically what it is. Oh, just evaporating the last little bit of water that we have out there in the ground. Of course, the aquifer continues to take a hit. It is down another foot today. We're still in stage one watering restrictions. Keep that in mind. So, yes, we had another record high temperature today. Not as hot right around the corner. Temperatures will be taking a little bit of a trend downward, and there is a small chance of rain to talk about. Don't get your hopes up, but it's better than nothing. All right, take a look at the high temperatures across the state today. Now, you will notice that the map isn't exactly fully populated because it takes a little bit of time for everybody to report in. We haven't gotten the official reports at those blank locations, so I will update this at 6 o'clock. But for what we have now here, San Antonio, Del Rio, Midland, all record high temperatures. Midland 111, Del Rio 110. So another record breaking day in Del Rio, breaking the old record by 3 degrees. You look a little closer to San Antonio and all across South Texas. 100 degrees just about everywhere. You have to get in the high humidity right along the coastline to be in the 90s today. Victoria 99, Corpus Christi had a high of 95, but I mean, we're talking 108, Catula, 102 for the high in Kerrville, Junction 106, New Braunfels 107. Current readings pretty much right there at the high temperature, maybe one or two degrees shy of what we had an hour or two ago when we hit our record high. So we're still above 100 right now and that surf temperature by the way at 85 degrees off Bob Hall Pier. Now here's the key tomorrow in the low 100s again. We're thinking about 101, 102. So that's going to be record challenging. The record is 102 tomorrow. But then by Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we see those high temperatures drop back down into the upper 90s. The upper level heat high, that big dome of high pressure above us, it's flexing its muscle right now, but it's going to loosen up its grip a little bit in the coming days. So still hot, but not the triple digit heat we've been experiencing here in town. And here's one reason why temperatures spiked again today. It's because of the drier air in the afternoon. We get the mixing of the drier air aloft, mixes downward, and that allows our temperatures to jump into the low 100s. Whereas I mentioned earlier, you get into the higher humidity along the coastline and that humid air just doesn't heat up as efficiently and as dramatically. Not a cloud in the sky locally, a few clouds. In North Texas, that's about it. But there's the upper level heat high, the big blue H that's still in charge. Firm grip on our weather pattern, but there are some little changes coming our way. Subtle, but they're changes. Notice this inverted trough here, this upper level disturbance over basically the Florida panhandle by tomorrow. That's going to be drifting westward. Our heat high is going to drift northward. It's going to open the door for this weak disturbance to move just south of town, but be basically enough energy to kickstart a few showers or thunderstorms, mainly along the coastal plain, but there is that off chance we could actually have a few lucky spots closer to San Antonio. Mainly east of I-35 is that slight chance of rain as we get into Friday. So hot this evening, look at this, 8 p.m., still 98 
10 p.m. at 90 midnight mid 80s with some increasing clouds and then tomorrow morning we'll start the day at 78 degrees with some morning low clouds otherwise sunny back up a little above 100 pretty close to that record high and only a 20 percent chance of rain unfortunately in the forecast that'll be on friday that slight chance 20 percent otherwise we are looking dry we know the aquifer needs a drink of water it's july in south texas and it's just not the type of weather pattern that brings the rain Keep an eye on it. We've got, yeah, we've got some breaking news we want to bring you right now. This is from the Kirby area. Apparently a house fire. Here you get a better look of it. Look at it. This is from the Kirby area. It looks as if it's coming from the back of the roof. And, uh, you know, firefighters are on the scene, but we, you see them in the backyard. Right. We're not seeing any water right now getting poured on there. Uh, again, this just coming into the KSET newsroom, Sky 12 over the scene. This is in the town of Kirby. A house fire, it appears to be in the rear of the home. Looks like the something in the backyard. Yeah, I was going to say, fire. look, we thought it was the roof now. It looks like it may be actually something in the backyard. Like a fire. deck, perhaps. Uh, looks like a deck burned there. Uh, maybe a barbecue, who knows. Uh, it's coming but, from the roof, though, as well, and it's it does not look good. A much different view as we get around to the backside. Uh, you can see the backyard also scorched, completely which scorched, makes yeah. you wonder if this didn't start in the backyard and spread. It's hard to tell right now, but we'll continue to uh, keep an eye on it. You can see flames there in the corner of that house. See right there at the corners we loop around. You get an idea of some of the flames there. But again, there, there are people walking around, but again, the, I don't see any hoses in use there. Yep. Sports is up next. Two NBA players have inadvertently broken the NBA bubble created at the Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. The most recent is Rashawn Holmes of the Sacramento Kings. He admits he crossed the line. We went to pick up a food delivery. As a result, he's been placed back in quarantine for an additional 10 days, confined to his hotel room. We'll be subject to more coronavirus testing. Holmes apologized for his breach and says he still has eight days before he can rejoin his teammates. The same goes for the Rockets' Bruno Caboclo, who left his hotel room before his quarantine period had ended after taking his initial court, uh, coronavirus test after entering the bubble. Inside the bubble, Spurs guard Patty Mills has asked about the breach. It wasn't me. I'll make that clear. My, my boundary lines has been the, inside of the hotel room. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, it, it, it is a bubble. And, you know, like, like I, I stated earlier, that, you know, the health and safety was, was a concern. But I think, um, you know, you, you're still able to control um, a lot of that, um, regardless of the the boundary lines that are already set. But, um, you know, you just hope that everyone can cooperate and, and do what's asked of them because, um, you know, it, it is our health at the end of the day that's at stake here and, and us just being able to get on the court and, and play. Spurs had today off with not much to do since they're confined to the bubble canvas. Lonnie Walker, the four twing this out. Only four days in the bubble. I miss my dogs. Complete with Ron Burgundy and his glass cage of emotion. Compelling and rich. Indeed. <laughs> like, I shouldn't have had milk today. Not at all. Yeah, not today. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. We got a location on that fire we showed you just a few moments ago. This is the 4700 block of Stable Hollow. This is in the town of Kirby. Yeah, you can see they're actually putting some water on a shed in the back. We saw some flames a little bit ago. Of course, we hope to update the story coming up at 6.